Good afternoon, First Lutheran and Philippus UCC faith community. Pastoral intern Tyler here with you today um, on this really cold afternoon. Um, I woke up this morning and went downstairs to check my thermostat and it was like 59 degrees. <laughs> so I'm not quite ready to turn on the heat yet, but I've got a jacket on today to try to keep myself warm and I'm hoping we'll, we'll turn on the, the heat at some point soon. I wanted to talk a little bit today about something that's happening this weekend, um, something that you might be celebrating, and it's Halloween. Um, I personally, Halloween is one of my favorite times of year. Um, it gets a little colder and the leaves start to change. Um, I love to eat all the treats and uh, you know the, the apple cider and the pumpkin pie and uh, those chocolate and peanut butter uh, pumpkins that you can get from uh, the grocery store. I, I really enjoy that. And sometimes curling up and watching a scary movie or something at home. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to talk a little bit about Halloween from a Christian tr tradition perspective. I'm not going to say whether or not you should celebrate Halloween. Um, I think that's sometimes a little bit of a silly question to say. Um, but Halloween does have a connection to uh, Christian tradition and liturgy. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. To sort of start off um, in talking about where Halloween came from, originally it was a pagan holiday at the end of the harvest season. Uh, it was celebrated in Europe before uh, before Christianity came to um, to the people living in, on the continent. And it was a day in which the people believed that um, the spirits of the dead would return to earth and visit them. And so there's a lot of different traditions around that. That's kind of where we get the idea of like ghosts on Halloween. But um, when Christianity came to the continent and most people sort of adopted this sort of practice, um, there was a, a Christianity tends to take some of these holidays and they tend to make some theological significance to those holidays as well. Um, whether or not that's cultural appropriation, I think that's something that we probably should be a little mindful of, um, taking other people's traditions and making them Christian. Um, there's positives and negatives there, um, but this is something that definitely happened, and I think it's worth naming. But in uh, the spirit of Halloween, uh, what Christians did to sort of keep the significance of this tradition, the celebration, uh, was they turned it into something called All Saints Day, which is celebrated on November 1st. And so the, the day before, uh, they would call All Hallows' Eve or All, um, All Holy Eve, All Saints' Eve. Um, and that's where we get the term Halloween from. And so in this particular holiday, in this particular festival celebration, we remember everybody who has gone before us, uh, who's died, who's lived an example of faith. And um, we might be sad, remembering the fact that they're no longer with us. Um, but we're also happy. This is also a celebration time of year in which we get to remember that they're with God now. They're resting in God's mercy. They've claimed the promises of their baptism. And it's a reminder that one day we will also be in that space too. So All Saints Day is a super important. It's one of the, the, the holiest days in the church calendar. It's towards the end of the season. Um, it's one of my personal favorite holidays as well. And so during this tradition, what we do uh, is we make a list of everybody who's passed away in the last year, everybody that's connected to our faith community. And during service, we say their names and we ring a bell. And the bell is, is just sort of the symbol, is this reminder that um, they're still sort of with us in a way. We are deeply connected with the idea of, when we talk about All Saints Day, this communion of saints. And what does that mean? What is the communion of saints? Um, we say this every week when we say the when we say the creed. You know, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Um, and so, the communion of saints is are those believers that are here with us um, on Earth right now, and also those that have gone before, the people that we are connected to, the the monuments of history, the the martyrs and the confessors, the saints that we know, and also the ones that history may have forgotten as well. We are connected in this huge web of uh, saintly people that God has called and claimed, uh, people that have been uh, changed by God in baptism and ha have lived lives that, uh, that ultimately uh, faithful lives. 
um, that ultimately uh, witness to who God is and how God works in the world. And so this is an important holiday for us. Um, it allows us to look forward and also look at what's going on right now. It's We sometimes use the term eschatol eschatological. It's a big churchy word, um, but it just means in time. It just means looking at the, the kingdom of God that's coming into the world. And it's this reminder that one day um, God is working, one day that God will return and that we will experience the fullness of what it means to be connected to God um, on the other side of the pale. And so we talk a lot about death. We talk a lot about resurrection too, because for us Christians, those two ideas are so interconnected, death and resurrection. You have to have both of them um, in order to, to really find significance, I think. So um, that's a little bit about All Saints Day, which we celebrate. And then All Hallows Eve, of course, is just the, the night before, um, before that particular celebration. October 31st is also um, Reformation Day. What we celebrate as Reformation Day is um, in, in the Lutheran tradition, and it's uh, the day in which we sort of have this uh, legend where Martin Luther went to the church door and he had 95 um, things to say about um, practices that the church was doing that uh, were ultimately harmful or ultimately um, damaging to the people of faith. And he nailed them on the church door and there was this big ordeal and he got excommunicated or he got kicked out of the church because of it and uh, started the Reformation. It probably wasn't that um, that legendary. It was probably a lot simpler. Uh, but we we observe October 31st as sort of the, the date of the printing of the 95 theses, the 95 statements that Martin Luther said, these are some abuses that the church is doing. And it's centered around this idea of indulgences. So um, in the medieval church, what you would do is you could purchase an indulgence um, if you had committed a sin or if um, you had a relative who had committed a sin and had died. And so those indulgences were supposed to um, forgive their sins. So you paid a little money, the money went to the church so they could build buildings, um, and your loved one was released from purgatory, uh, this little holding place before they went to heaven. And so Martin Luther saw some, some issues with that. Um, there was a, a, a huge issue in um, taking money and abusing money and abusing theology and saying, you know, you have to pay in order to have your sins forgiven. And so a lot of the theology that we as Protestants have developed out of that um, developed out of that struggle. And so this is sort of the day we remember. It is, um, it's a day that is both um, exciting, but also sad. Um, we remember that in our separation and our reformation, we're separated from uh, a church body, the Roman Catholic Church. Um, and that's a reminder that there's broken relationships there. There's things that still need to be healed. But there's also a good thing about the Reformation Day, um, a reminder that we don't have to pay for um, for the love of God. We don't have to pay for salvation. That's something that's given freely. And because it's given freely, um, because we don't have to pay for it, we give everything that we have. Um, everything that we are as human beings um, is an act of love, uh, an act of service to one another. And we do that freely because God gives freely to us. So that's the important piece. That's the important piece that we're reminded every year um, about Reformation Day as well. So if you are planning on attending church on Sunday, we encourage you to wear red. Red is sort of this um, this color that we, we wear a couple times of the year on Pentecost and on Reformation Day. And it's a, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's a symbol of the saints who have gone before us. So the, the, the blood of the martyrs, the blood of Jesus is, is inter, interconnected to this too. And it's just something we like to do as Lutherans is wear, wear red on Reformation Day. So uh, if you're coming and you have something red to wear, wear it. Uh, it'll be great. Uh, so apart from that, that's kind of the, the big things that we're talking about today. Um, so Halloween, All Saints Day, and uh, Reformation Day. We really look forward to seeing you there um, on church in, in church on 
um, October 31st and November 7th. So October 31st is Reformation Sunday. October 7th is uh, All Saints Sunday. And there's some really interesting practices that we have, uh, some really interesting ideas and arts that um, that you'll you'll see in some of the emails coming up that we're going to that we're going to do. So really exciting there. And then tonight um, is the second installment of. Pray Without Ceasing, this is my internship project and it is a spiritual practice workshop. So you can join us online on Zoom or uh, if you prefer, you can join us in person at Ascension Lutheran Church in Montgomery, uh, Ohio. So just a little further north. Um, this particular day, we're gonna be talking about uh, the liturgy of the hours. What is that? Um, and it's this sort of liturgy that uh, faith communities would practice uh, started in the Middle Ages. You prayed at specific times during the day, and so much of the day was structured around prayer. So we're going to talk about some of the remnants that we have today, like morning prayer and evening prayer and prayer at the close of the day. Um, and our practice today is going to be hold an evening prayer. So if you love hold an evening prayer or if you've never done it before and you're really, really interested to see what that's about, uh, I encourage you to attend tonight at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Well, with that, uh, let's go ahead and go to God in prayer and uh, thank God for the uh, the people of faith in our lives. Um, and as we pray, I want you to think about who those people are for you. If you have any people or any stories you'd like to share in the comments in this video, I'd love to see it. People that um, were role models of faith for you or, or uh, images of faith for you. Uh, this is a really important time for us to remember those. So the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this brisk autumn morning. We thank you for the change in the leaves. We thank you for um, this time of year in which uh, we gather together and we participate in some fun stuff. We thank you for uh, Philippus UCC and uh, their hospitality to uh, us at First Lutheran. And thank you for this opportunity for us to work together in ministry and explore what that looks like. We especially give you thanks today, though, for those who've gone before us, for the saints in our lives, um, the people that we may know and the people that we may not know, the people that are connected to us and the people, the legends of history as well. May they be examples to us on how we live our life. And thank you so much for the grace that you give us, that we might be able to emulate those examples, that we might be able to show one another your love that you have shown us. Remind us too at the end of this life that you have us in your hands, uh, ready to usher us into the kingdom beyond this world, and ultimately reminding us that you will reconcile everything to yourself. And we await this new creation with you. Um, sometimes it's sad when we remember those who've gone before us, um, but it's also sometimes really worth celebrating. God, we thank you for all the things that you give us, and we ask that you be with us this day and the rest of the week. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad that you took some time out of your day to uh, participate in um, in our afternoon midweek prayer and hope you have a great rest of your day.